Hi, and thanks for watching. Over the next few minutes, I want to discuss some of the various methods for calculating preferred return in real estate, and then talk about the ramifications of each method. And so today I'm going to look at a simple interest preferred return calculation, but with a cumulative or, or accrued preferred return, meaning if there's unpaid preferred return in a given period, that amount must be repaid at some point before the end of the analysis period. The second method is simple interest plus non-cumulative, meaning the preferred return doesn't accrue. If there's unpaid preferred return, it goes unpaid. And then finally, compound interest. We often call this an IRR hurdle, and it is compounding and cumulative, meaning uh, any future preferred return is calculated based on the previous balance plus any unpaid preferred return. So here I have just a pretty simple property uh, acquired for a million. It throws off anywhere from 80,000 to 95,000 per year. And so roughly eight to nine and a half percent cash on cash return. And then a reversion at the end of our analysis period of 1.3 million. And the question is how uh, do distributions to, in this case, our capital partner, impact its returns based on the, th the three methods of calculating preferred return that, that I just laid out. So the first we have, again, simple interest plus cumulative. And I'll uh, add a link to the uh, um, description below where you can find and download just this file and quickly so you can kind of eyeball how I uh, calculated each of these methods. But again, simple interest plus cumulative. And when I say simple interest, the preferred return is simply calculated on the capital contributed to date is not calculated on any unpaid preferred return. And of course, in this uh, scenario so far, it results in 600,000 in net profit and a 6% IRR, which is equal to the 6% preferred return in this uh, uh, first option. The second is simple interest, non-cumulative. And again, because there's more than sufficient, sufficient cash flow to pay out a 6% preferred return each year, the return is 6% IRR, 600,000 net profit. And then finally, compound interest. Again, any unpaid preferred return accrues to the capital balance, and then future preferred return is calculated on the sum of unpaid preferred return and the capital account of balance itself. And again, when there's sufficient cash flow to pay out the preferred return, the returns are identical. However, what happens then in scenarios, quite common, where there, there is insufficient cash flow to cover the preferred return? Well, let's take a look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assume this is a development deal. And in year one and two, there is no operating income. So I just go ahead and zero out those years. And what we find here in the first option, uh, simple interest cumulative, that the preferred return goes unpaid in year one and two as expected. And then that accrues to the balance that must be repaid at the end. However, the preferred return continues to be calculated based on capital contributed. And the result in this scenario, simply by zeroing out preferred return in the, or uh, operating income in the first two years, still results in a $600,000 net profit. However, the IRR is less than 6%. And that's because a dollar today is worth more than a dollar out in the future. And because most of these dollars, even though it's the same amount that are being earned, are being earned out in the future, the internal rate of return is actually less. Now, what happens when the interest, the preferred return doesn't accrue? Well, again, the capital account balance then stays the same. Preferred return goes unpaid and both the IRR is less because there's less uh, cash flow, there are fewer distributions to the capital partner, and the net profit is less. However, in the case of a compound interest method, the IRR uh, hurdle, which is the preferred uh, method for institutional capital partners, by the way, even though preferred return goes unpaid, because it A, accrues to the capital account, and B, that preferred return is being calculated on the growing capital account. The resulting IRR is the same, 6% equal to the preferred return. 
and the net profit is actually higher. And so the capital partner in this case gets more distributions than it does in our base case because those are dollars out in the future that are worth less than, than dollars earlier in the analysis period. And so those are some of the ramifications for the various methods of calculating preferred return. Something to think about next time you're negotiating your JV agreement. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for your time.